far as like using that spell, that's not something like I recognize uh, being like yeah, a very I mean, effective. The only time I've seen it do anything was when I had this Mars at mid, and he was like doing okay, and he was like pushing the tier two at about 50 minutes into the game, and he had bulwarked active, and the enemy team pressed fortify. He didn't turn his bulwark off, and he died in like four sh shots because the tower's multi shotting, <laughs> and he was taking like eighty percent of the projectiles, seventy percent of the projectiles as damage, yeah. and he just straight up died. Like he he just died, and he was like, "What?" He hadn't read the patch. He was like, "What? What happened? Why did I die?" It says I took like nine hundred damage from the tower, and like, I had to explain it to him, and he was like, "Oh, my bad." <laughs> I was like, "That's all right, buddy." Yeah. I think even if you had read the patch, you'd still be like, "What the hell?" Yeah. Pretty funny. I mean, these towers do so much damage now with the split shot, like, it's actually insane. Yeah, they just, like, kind of create groups. I mean, I kind of like it, though, because I think the old fortifier was kind of, like, you keep your yeah, tower yeah, alive, terrible. but you don't debuff, so what's yeah. the point, right? And, and they also buff the damage of the tier two, tier 2 and Tier 3 towers, right? So they actually yeah. do way more damage. Now, when are they going to give the fountain split shot and true strike? That's that's my question. It Does it have, like, true, some kind of true, si uh, true strike already? The uh, it's got, like, 75% like true strike, I think. Yeah, so. that's already huge. You already can't fountain dive anymore. <laughs> I, 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 I tried I more. When I came back to Dota, like, some weeks ago, like, the first thing I did was fountain dive, and I died. And I'm like, what the first hell thing you did, is you this? In, you ran down mid, you jump into the fountain, and you're like, what? Why did I die? Well, the Get game back. ended in, like, 30 minutes, and I was, like, destroying. I was, like, playing Phantom Assassin or something, and then... I couldn't tank the fountain. I'm like, what's happening in this game? Oh yeah, what, what do you think just... of the PA thing? Because there's been a bit of discussion about that. The PA oh, is so good. It's so good. PA think... was already a good hero. Yeah, I think it's insane. I think this hero is actually so good. So um, her changes were 20% cleave to 25% cleave at level 15. That obviously makes a talent which was sometimes picked like much better. Like 5% on cleave is 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 pretty oh, sick. Yeah. Uh. Plus twenty four percent blur evasion level twenty to plus thirty percent blur evasion level twenty. So that's that's pretty ridiculous. I mean, that's a six yeah. percent increase. Yeah, level twenty five talent was like insane. Like, yeah, that's basically like and you hit... what it was before. Right, right, right. It's it's, it's like great, and you point. and you're gonna hit like level thirty like at some point. Anyway, you're gonna get all your talents. And you're gonna be absolutely amazing. Like that hero is so good in the league. Session. Yeah, yeah. And then the level 25, this is the interesting one, because I changed it from plus 8% coup de gras chance, chance right? to yeah. plus 100% 100%. coup de gras. I'll take 100% damage. any day. Really? I'll take 100%. Yeah. But I don't, I don't care about, about Your overall DPS is like 20% less, roughly, like 15% less, roughly, right? Yeah, but you want to burst people. You, you don't, just, you don't want need to, get, to like. You, you just want to troll support, so you just want to throw a dagger at the dazzle and watch him get one exactly, shot. Exactly. Like, you're, you're you a sadist, be able to dude. You're an absolute doing sadist. one abyssal blade, then like having to crit like two or three times. You know what I mean? Like, like in one abyssal blade, you get like one crit or two crits, whatever. Like the guy is gonna die. Anyway, they've picked up every hero now, which we haven't even mentioned once, but uh, since those first yeah. two picks, we've uh, now had an Ogre Magi, a Lone Druid, and a Troll Warlord coming out. I see a lot of synergy going on with that Bloodlust between the Lone Druid's Bear and the Troll Warlord. A lot of carry on the side of Cyber Legacy as well. Meanwhile, Nova, they've gone for the Dark Widow, the Morphling, and the Queen of Pain. Just quickly, round up these two drafts and tell me who you think is going to win. Whew, I'm going to go with Cyber Legacy this game. Cool. All right, that's, that's it for the draft uh, then, guys. We're just going to wait for the game to start now. Yeah. So I, I mean, the reason why. Let me, let me go ahead and uh, you know elaborate, oh, elaborate a little bit. A little bit of okay. Yeah. So, so the reason why they picked these heroes is, um, I mean, like you can see, Lundra is going to be going to the alpha in this game, which is, I, I didn't realize that's that's what's going to be happening. And then Bignum is going to be playing middle with his Mars, and this last pick, Troll Warlord, with his Diffusal Blade. I think it's going to be completely uncontested unless this Dark Willow somehow just like kills this troll like two or three times in this game in the early in the early stages uh if that doesn't happen and this troll just keeps farming and the lone druid and mars just non-stop making space i don't think there's anything that uh team nova is going to be able to do to this troll roller like he's just going to be a monster with the fusel blade my one concern does come from the fact that there's an opportunity for cyber legacy to just run uh, sorry, no, for the opportunity from Nova to just run over this. Like, if they win the laning phase, they have got mm -hmm. heroes which can just crush the side of Cyber Legacy. If right. this Queen of Pain or this Morphling gets out of control, like, oh, okay, let, let, let's have a look over towards. Yeah, they're putting Morphling okay. mid versus Lone Druid. The, the 
versus the Lundred. I think that's gonna be rather tough for the morph. Especially in the first level. Like, this bear is just gonna keep running after you, right? And just keep hitting you. I don't think Morphling likes slaying against Laundroid. I'm not even sure if he has any experience playing Morphling versus Laundroid. Like, if you... Okay, the thing about mid is very simple. If you've never played the matchup before, the chance of you losing the matchup is very, very high. <laughs> Especially if both players are, like, of equal skill. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, let's see, like, how this Morphling is gonna do in the mid lane. Because, like, I, I personally don't know how it will go, but I assume that Londrid will do extremely well here. And he's got an Orb of Venom to go as well, and Morphling has very low movement speed, 280 MS. I think Morph is one of the heroes that suffered a lot from when um, the stats change happened, where, like, agility doesn't give you movement speed anymore, and, you know, strength doesn't give you all that. When, when, they, when they nerfed that thing, um, Morphling doesn't get a bunch of movement speed when he, you know, puts all this shift into agility. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that, that definitely is going to make a small difference to the hero, for sure. I think, um, yeah. I don't know, I'm, I'm just a hardcore Lorenov fan now. After that last game, this guy can do no wrong. He's going to smash the slain. He's going to carry the second game for Wait, them. Hold on. Hold on. I, I forgot to mention something. What's up? This guy's Morphling level 24. He's almost a master tier Morphling. Yeah, dude. He's. Of he's... course he's played this matchup before. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even a question. This guy has, like, hundreds of Morphling games already. Expectation. Yeah, he's uh, he's he probably he probably knows what's about to happen in this middle lane. Meanwhile, but Shasha is a pretty pretty hardcore drip. Although only gold, but uh, probably scrims a little bit more. Meanwhile, there's been some axes thrown, some spells thrown down at the bottom here. Low keys. Happy, he's happy to rock. Okay. I guess he didn't want like ignite to be dispelled by the uh, fortunes end there, so he just like ah whatever. I'll just have naked. No skills whatsoever. Yeah, he is still going to go for it. And actually, Luke Keats is maybe getting burned down here. He pops that uh, Bramble Maze to come forwards. Plants is trying to run him down. He's got the axes. Is it going to be enough damage? No, it's not. Because there's a fairy fire coming out from the Willow just in time. Loki's times it right. And Plants Mice will get back empty handed. But still a decent amount of damage done to the Willow. Going to force out the salve. Mm -hmm. And there's, uh, know about this game as well. Like, they don't have that many melee heroes or like heroes that can go in the front line. They, they're literally trying to replicate the same kind of gameplay that they had in game one, where they just want to like keep fighting nonstop with their heroes. Mm -hmm. And uh, my concern in this game is that nobody on Nova is going to buy any team items. Whereas like Cyber Legacy have like this clear path of like, okay, Mars is going to get Vladimir's. He's going to get probably another team item. Phoenix will also buy like Vessel or something because he's fighting against Morphling. Um, even if there's an Oracle on the other team, I think you still need to buy a Vessel. Um, and then you got like this Laundry and Troll who are just gonna group up and take towers. So, like Nova, re like I said, Nova really gotta get some good laning situation going in order to stay on par with Cyber Legacy this game in terms of draft. What balance do you think the game is in right now in terms of importance on roll? So, um, how mm -hmm. you know if you had to put it percentage wise, would you say like maybe? mid previously in the early days of dota used to carry about like maybe 60 percent of the weight and then you carry carry like 30 percent of the weight and then your offlane used to carry maybe like 20 percent back then what what about now where, where where are you putting the importance so 33 33 mm. 33 yeah it kind of feels that way doesn't it like every ro yeah. every every or every lane just matters so much like if one lane falls apart one lane loses it's like all your lanes suffer from yeah, they so, lose really hard, exactly. Exactly, like every single lane was something. Like one lane going like super bad for one team just essentially means that you're just going to probably lose the game. Yeah, Just based on that. That's kind of one of the reasons why pubs feel a little bit kind of stompy right now, I think, to, to a lot right, of people. Right. Because you do get these just disastrous lanes. They don't kind of... what do Pub players, one of the things they do worst, I'd say, is damage control. When you look to a pro team, like if someone starts like getting wrecked, you won't really see them like falling into a massive feed pattern where they're just dying over and over again if they're a core player. Support sometimes, right. yeah, but they're always dying in good ways. They're using their death, they're using the fact they don't have much worth to find a bonus for a team. Nice micro from the uh, the co-op on their curry there, but uh, yeah. 
Oh, she's, she's playing them. Happy, he's, he's looking for this courier still, but he might have just led himself into a bit of a sticky situation in these trees. The Rebel Mace comes down, but the axe is coming down onto low keys. Oh, Never mind. I mean, this hero is just so oh. tanky. Can he finish the job, though? Needs one more axe and will find it. The axe comes through and the willow goes down. Happy. Did I mean, it? it's go. struggling. No lapses whatsoever for this lad here. The who, sorry? The Queen of Pain, the Queen of Pain. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's only, she's only just getting on the board now. But there is a wave coming under her tower. But, yeah, I mean, this is uh, kind of brutal. I mean, I think Ogre is just kind of a showcase of how strong this hero can be in the right situations. Like, he's just running at them. They turn around. They're like, oh, we've caught the Ogre out. Let's drop our spells. Yeah, there's no way he can escape this. And then he's just, sits, he's just sitting there, you know, drool running down his face. It's not running out his nose. Just just doing nothing. And he's just absorbing everything. The troll comes over, loves some action. All of a sudden, the Willow's dead instead. He's just so damn tanky. He yeah. just tanks everything. I mean, Palantimos, like, in this game is, like, in his, um... I feel like he's, like, in his natural habitat now, you know? He's, like, playing a hero that can actually do something in the lane compared to the Naga Siren situation. So they're having a really good time in his bottom lane, and he feels like he's got that power in his hand to be Absolutely. able to actually punish them. Meanwhile, up atop, you got Bignum on the Mars and King R on the Phoenix versus just the on the Oracle and Space on his Ember Spirit. And uh, this lane so far has been a pretty evenly matched. The Mars pulling a little bit further ahead. It's down in the bottom lane again. It's going to be low keys going down in much the same way as the first way as they look over towards the Queen of Pain. She's got a blink though, so it isn't in too much danger here. But happy, she's going to keep on chasing him down and throwing in these right clicks. Meanwhile, yeah. up at top, Bignum getting pretty low here. He just kind of straight up loses life. He misses his spear. He misses just about everything and gets beaten down. Doesn't have the ball walk and uh, loses his life. He, he does well, put the on the right the side, there, <laughs> yeah? he does get to come back into a lane with full everything. And the Ember has no mana. Oracle has like pretty much 100 mana left as well. So that is, that is something, at least. Like there's a lot of situations, especially in my pause where I'm playing safe lane, I kill the enemy off laner, and he comes back and he destroys me instead. Even though, like, we're the ones who get first blood or something in that kill. It's mainly because of, like, resources and things like that. But he does get a bottle, though, space, so he's going to be able to be um, topped off at this yeah. point. So it's not too, super bad, I mean. Meanwhile, Lorinov jumps in for that uh, that illusion rune to get it off Shashlo's hands there. And uh, does grab that one for himself. But yeah, this middle lane going very, very he's well for Lorinov so far. Yeah, he's he's, he's, he's doing owning great. his art. <laughs> Dude, he's owning his art. He's got eight denies against a lone druid. That's insane. And sh and you know the thing about lone druids, like they need all the XP they can possibly get, right? Right. This bear only. Uh, Loki is getting run down again in this bottom lane. Axe is coming out, but he's just going to get burnt up by the ignite. But Palantimos, not particularly healthy either. But Pion can't really afford to jump forwards and finish off this kill at risk of dying himself. So has to stay back and can't really finish the job here. But both so low on HP. I mean, if she just had a little bit more mana, could jump in with a scream, get the two kills. But uh, sadly, it will not be the case. But yeah, what I want to point out about this mid lane is. Oh, yeah, you got him. Fair enough. Free everything. Sure. I mean, hmm. you gotta go back to base for free, right? And yeah, come I think back. he was gonna live, but Plantimos was just like, you know what, buddy? It's it's better if you die here. And he's like, yeah, take me a flask. Down. Go, go <laughs> die and bring me a flask. That's your job right now. That's what he did. Pretty much. Pretty pretty much. Sad old life. Oh. We're happy, but at least we're not in the days when people used to just get to like half health and then be like, right, gonna go suicide to a tower. See you later, boys. Oh yeah, that I remember sucked. those days. That was like the Skyrath Mage days. He just comes yeah, to your lane, yeah. unloads all his mana, goes and dies to the tower, comes back, does the same thing like four times, and then is so miserable. Yeah, it's glad those days were over. Glad they made it uh, longer, but yeah, this mid lane. I mean, it's pretty easy to see how a Morphling can win this matchup, though, right? Because there's no burst, there's there's no real threat onto the Morphling, so he can just play around on Max Aji and then just kind of. Yeah, as you see here, just just give himself a little burst of strength whenever he needs it. You know, he's never really going below 20% HP. Except obviously when he chooses to, like this. And it, it just becomes impossible for Shashlo to really uh, really do anything in this lane. He's... Help him. Help him, space. Space indeed. He is in some trouble being burnt down. The heal's coming through with the purifying flames, but they'll be able to run him down all the same with some right clicks. Meanwhile, Lorinov with the double damage rune just going to be able to easily control up this, uh, this middle lane now and get himself a decent amount of CS in the process, but... Honestly, this is fun to watch. Like, this guy's just like juggling his stats really nicely. He's not being static at all with this. He's just constantly bouncing around, keeping on uh, as high agi as he possibly can. He's, uh, he's playing some damn nice morphling so far. 
Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at these guys' um, ranks here. <laughs> oh dear, there's Willow once again in the spot of the plant most not that healthy himself, but Loki's actually misses with the dirt, Shadow Realm hit, but doesn't really matter. Plant most still gonna lose his life to the Queen of Pain. They get the return kill onto Loki's, but not really worth it at all. And a laughter drawn out of lips from Loki's here as he does bring him down. Happy. Oh, that's that huge. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Troll kills early is so so big. And actually, Plantimos is a rank 81 player in Europe. So. Sorry, not Plantimos, uh, Lor Lorinoff, that's Lorinoff, a... Lorinoff. Right. Yeah, Lorinoff is a, is a rank 81 player in Europe, that's that's pretty impressive. Yeah, we're feeling it. We're definitely feeling it. It's yeah, this guy, that, no wonder he's a freaking monster. Like, if you're in the top 100 ranks in Europe, like, that's that's huge. There's, like, so many players there, so many great players, many great teams as well. So, it makes all the sense in the world now, like, how this guy's Shadow Fiend was so good. That's all. And Plantimos, bottom, well... Gonna try and go on Peon, but Peon casually just blinks out. I mean, the last hits don't really show, like, it's an even lane. But I feel as if the longer this laning stage goes for uh, Nova, they will get stronger. Like, the level 3 Shadow Strike is really annoying for um, Planting. And then the Dark Willow just does so much damage when she, when she hits uh, level 5. Yeah, and level 5 with the extra damage from the Shadow Realm, level 6 with the Bedlam and then as well. It's pretty insane. Meanwhile, Happy, he's just going to get run down here. This is a very awkward death indeed as he just runs forward yep. and gets bursted. Like, you, you, you can't you can't really play like that into this lane. Yeah, they were doing so well in their early laning stage, like bottom lane, um, Cyber. But now, I think the lane is super scary. And this Troll Warlord might actually consider going to a top lane. Or you're going straight into a jungle. And it's not even a bad idea to go into a jungle because you can start farming the neutral items, so, which is quite nice if you can get them for your team. Yeah, Troll, a, 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 not the best jungle farmer, but he's not bad at it. He's got the actions to spam out and just constantly keep bringing them down. And then he's got the Ogre Magi to throw him under Bloodlust or two, level two on that now. So, yeah, it shouldn't be too bad for him, but definitely would like to try and stay in this lane as long as possible. But if the pressure continues, they might be able to force him out into that jungle area. Meanwhile, Morphling, just like last game, just completely getting ahead of himself. 74 to 17 is his CS right now. And Shashla keeps sending his bear over, but his bear is actually losing the trade versus the Morphling. He's just got, you know, this guy's got 21 armor. Yeah. Your, your bear's not going to do anything to him. <laughs> is it normal that uh, Laundry doesn't have Savage Roy? I don't know, I'm afraid. I'm, I'm not really a, a Lone Druid player myself, nor have I seen that many games Lone Druid being played. I'm not that popular hero right now. Meanwhile, up at top, sure. they are actually going to get a cheeky kill onto King R here, as space and just run forward for it. Oh, bottom two, Palantimos. Uh-oh. In some trouble, but does have the ultimate to turn it around and chops up low keys. And Pion, he really wants to stay here and finish the kill because he has got his burst, but unfortunately just cannot withstand the massive damage coming out from this troll warlord. But he really wants to try and grab for this one. He could scream the ogre out of the way, but no, decides against it in the end. Ogre really going to try and go for the other one? No, I didn't think so. Pion's just going to walk past him, run up to the high ground and make sure he secures that bouncy rune. Thanks, Lorna, playing this uh, middle lane quite interesting here as well as he's kind of taking the mid lane and then pushing out and then taking the medium camp and then actually taking the enemy's medium camp a couple of times as well. He's really being active and just kind of farming everywhere he can. Never has he been kind of looking around, looking for creeps, waiting for a creep wave to come in. Like he's always got something to hit, which I think is, uh, Dude, he is an really absolute nice. beast. Yeah, he is. He is. <laughs> Look at his assets, man. He's almost got a hundred assets already. It's not like he's fighting against someone with somebody because he's just pushing out the waves, farming all the possible camps that he can and i mean the laundry is farming just as much but it's not even close right he's got like 30 last hits on this guy yeah no uh, shashlo is, is not keeping up at all and he's gonna lose his tower look at this he's trying to jump in for it doesn't get the last hit on the tower though a root comes out but unfortunately there's no burst damage he's just gonna keep on juggling the attributes and there's nothing shashlo can do about this he's lauren i'm just gonna straight up survive this one and then straight back down to full agi and uh happy as a lamb to uh to, to sit on a little bit of hp here he's got that morbid mask to keep on healing himself up happy days yeah, he's feeling great, especially taking the Laundress Tower. That is not something you normally see where a Morphing just takes Laundress Tower by himself. No one has even rotated into his, this middle lane the entire game as well. So, very impressive. And as you can see, the Troll Warlord has moved to the top lane now. Big Num throwing his ult down. And then 
comes the supernova over on head. Bignum is going to go down though in that top lane. The supernova comes crashing on through, stunning up the Oracle, but he got the false promise out onto himself just in time, and he's absolutely fine. Meanwhile, King Art throwing a couple of spells over the way of Pion. Pion though, he's all right. He's going to throw a dagger back the way. Well, for, face uh, back. Most. It's it's feeling kind of weird right now for Cyber like. I don't know if they have any idea of like where on the map they need to be anymore. Because this Morphling is completely untouchable. Yeah, well, right? they're going on bottom as the Spear comes out onto Lokis, and they're chaining out quite nicely here. He's going to be able to get that Shadow Realm off and even go in for the Bedlam into two heavily armored heroes here, so it's not making much of a difference. Meanwhile, Plantamos has died in response. Happy will be able to get a kill onto uh, Lokis, but nearly goes down himself. But yeah, a huge return kill coming out from Nova as they kill off the uh, the troll warlord. I mean, this is this is a number one hero you want to bring down. This is the guy who's done all right from this laning phase, but he gets shoved down the net worth chart with that kill. Yeah, that was a um, level eleven morphling chasing a level six troll warlord. What do you think is going through Plantino's mind when he, that was happening? Not very good thoughts, I would think. Oh god, oh fuck! That <laughs> kept me out. Something along those yeah. lines, probably. <laughs> and now they've lost two tier one towers i think top tower is like the worst tower for radiant to lose because uh, now they can't really take the enemy not again palantimos with the chains have yeah. come out onto him they're chasing they're keeping up with him tom's got to jump in forward throws forward that dagger he pops the but just in time to keep himself alive but will it do anything more than that i'm not sure sun's gonna come out from the dark willow nothing to be done about big them big them comes in and throws down a nice arena they might be able to grab themselves an ember spirit yeah the space is gonna die i'll move across to pion as well the queen of pain in some trouble losing her hp here as shashlo gets a nice fear out and we'll finish the job. Meanwhile, in comes an even better fear onto four heroes, allowing Loranov just get the free kill onto King R. And now he's still sticking around on this front lines here, but Cyber Legacy, they found themselves a bit of blood in the water and they want to chase for a little bit more, but the stun's going to be thrown down onto Shashlo's bear. And I think that's going to be just about it from this gank. Yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, Nova should be very happy with that situation since they did kill the Troll Warlord once again. And they're just going to keep on going. They know the Mars ult's on cooldown. They don't got that big team fight. They want the bear. They may well just get him. Shashlo's bear gonna get rooted up here. Space on top of it, doing the magic damage. The right click damage will not be allowed to come in though. As Happy throws down the stun, throws down the ignite, and uh, bloodlust the bear up as well, making sure he can get himself away. Nicely done by the Ogre Magi to protect that bear at all costs. Arcane is... Moon chilling at bottom. Yeah, this is gonna it's... be another reason for Nova to keep on fighting against uh, Cyber Legacies line up here yeah, i don't know man Pl good. dude they're going after him again they just keep haunting him they're just never letting him farm for free whatsoever and why not i mean there's no, there's no other pressure on the map there's nothing else for them to deal with this game i think cyber Legacy just aren't really making plays Plantamos getting brought down. Meanwhile, Loranov, I mean, they're trying to chase him, but it's doing nothing. Meanwhile, Plantamos will lose his life to the burst from just the end. Uh, that's him dead again. Did actually have the ultimate, but didn't have a chance to get it out. Meanwhile, back in the jungle, they're turning around. They will be able to rip apart Loki. They do have the damage for that, at least. But it's a very small trade. Not a good one, either. And this is the Definitely thing, right? Not. These four heroes... I don't know if that's the best way for them to be playing. Like, do you think they should be trying to make plays elsewhere on the map rather than reacting actively to what Nova are doing and trying to get response kills? I feel like they just need to group up with the Lone Druid because he's got the Mask of Madness, he's kind of strong. Yeah, and just try to like take some towers with him. But I feel like the Lord, like Loranoff being this strong, I don't think they've accounted for that whatsoever. No, not at all. Like, this Warfling is a freaking beast and he's actually fighting with his team. He's got a Manta. It's 15 minutes in, he's got a Manta. <laughs> and a Morbid Mask. Yeah, this, this isn't just a Manta rush. This is a Morbid Mask into this item and yeah, he's just insanely farmed at this point. Meanwhile, in they go on to Shashlo. Shashlo's okay, but Supernova's got to come on over the top, trying to force back the side of Nova. Lauren, I've thought about going in for that Sun run, but decided not to bother. Probably the right play here. Supernova wasted, basically, uh, just to kind of try and keep oh, Shashlo. Oh, Lauren. Here's Bingham into the inside of the map. Oh, oh man, that was really nice. Uh, Hello. <laughs> All right, fair enough. They uh, turn around though. A uh, screen's been used onto King R here, and the stroke might 
be enough to finish the job there with the slide of fist. The move comes out as well, but Palance most will be able to throw out the deny onto King Art just in time. Meanwhile, Lorinov, he's looking forward to this bear here, maybe looking for the real daddy, but uh, the roar comes out, forcing him back. But space, he's looking, he's got the chains forwards onto Shasho, Pion's on top of him as well. The right click's coming through thick and fast, and down goes that lone druid. It's a mega kill streak now for Lorinov as he is doing what he wants when he wants on this map, being so enabled by his team as well. My thanks will come later. Yeah, I mean, Lokez uh, trying to keep Cyber Legacy in the game there, but, you know, it ain't working out. Lorenoff is just too hard of a carry to deal with, I think. This man, holy smokes. And he's going for the Scotty too. I think it's a really good pickup. It's going to slow down the troll, the bear. Um, whatever life steal may come out from Mars later as well. Radiant's That's gonna be yeah, really nice. And the trolls and ulti as well. That life steal is not gonna be right. nearly as effective with that Scardi 35% reduction on it as well. But yeah, I mean, massively. Exactly. Most importantly for the slow, I think, is the big one this game. Yeah, and they're just he's just going for the next tower bottom. They're gonna take this tower too. All the tier ones are dead now for Cyber. Like they're not gonna be able to have too much map control anymore. This. Oh, Shackle got caught. In the middle lane, they're trying to get down this lone druid and they will be able to do so. They have the magic nukes, they don't even need their morphling anymore. The trading wheels are off and Nova are just slapping them down time and time again. Yeah, I mean the goal lead is only 3k for Nova, but it just feels like it's like a 10k goal lead. Yeah. You know? Mainly because the hero where all this farm is sitting on is the morphling. And the morphling is the last hero that you wanted. <laughs> Being so fat in this game. Well, don't say last hero. Cyber Legacy just kicked the poor guy. Yeah. Yeah, struggling to readjust right now, Cyber Legacy. They're they're in a strange place, and uh, yeah, Nova definitely uh, pulling it together and uh, using this 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 time of kind of chaos inside the region to uh, get their names out there and get themselves a cheeky win here. And uh, I think definitely, you know, I'm going to be showing a lot more respect to this uh, Nova team when we uh, look through this draft from now on because, uh, you know, previously I kind of just uh, didn't really expect much from them, but uh, they're proving what they can do in this series, that's for sure. Smacking them down. I mean, this guy, this level 24 Morphling guy is like, he's just crazy. His Shadow Fiend was so impressive too. He just does so well in this 1v1 matchups and... Uh, I guess like in the future, if somebody does play Nova, they gotta consider like poking at this guy in the mid lane and try to annoy him instead of just giving him a straight up 1v1 because that's exactly what he excels at, is what it feels like. Yeah, in these two games, it's, it's definitely looked good for him, but uh, has had pretty good matchups in these games, you gotta say, you know, like the Shadow Fiend okay. Ember, you gotta love it. Morphling into uh, into Lone Druid, you know, no burst damage, so Morphling just sit at full agi in, in life is, is pretty good for, uh, for a yeah. good Morphling player. Yeah, I, I was completely wrong about the matchup with the Laundry and Morphling. Morphling is just way too good of a hero. Like, it just doesn't care about this Laundry bear whatsoever. You're We're right. Setting up for something now. Both teams kind of gathering in this area. Maybe Cyber Legacy have been scared out as uh, Happy's going to get daggered up. Now chains out onto Soga Magi as well. He's going to turn around with a stun on the Ember Spirit. Meanwhile, they go in with the big arena onto him through the back line. But in comes the scream, forcing them back. Supernova coming out in time. Is it going to do enough damage? Not really. Lauren Up's still totally fine. They're trying to finish off the egg here. Will be able to do so. Meanwhile, Blantamos has to pop that all in the back line. Let's get a kill onto Dark Willow, but he's got so little HP. With that Spirit Venice alone, he's just going to get taken down the moment he comes out the other side. And Lauren Up's still completely fine as he jumps on forwards here. Looking for the big kill. Stun up onto the high ground from Happy Dorara. Meanwhile, in the back lines, Bigman coming and wrapping down from behind. Oh, I'm gonna get himself out of this one, but unfortunately Justin won't be so lucky, but they get the return kill onto Happy Diorara, and now they have the root up onto the Ember Spirit, but unfortunately there's just not enough damage coming out from this lone druid. No threat at all for this Ember, as he's gonna TP himself away, and that fight just does not go well for Cyber Legacy. They just don't have the resources for these fights to go well for them, and this, uh, you know, this, this Spirit Vessel completely counters what the troll wants to do. Dude, this is... That, that was such a good Mars ult too, and if that Phoenix Egg could have went off somehow in that fight, I think Nova, like everybody on Nova would have died there. But unfortunately, the like, Lornoff knew exactly what he had to do in the fight. He waveformed yeah. in, you know, he was not affected by any fire spirits whatsoever, it took out that egg, and the fight just turned around so fast that Nova was just able to kill off like pretty much most of the important heroes, right? Like, I, I don't feel like uh, Nova lost anything of value in the last fight. No, no, exactly. And 
You know, the, the egg, I think it was just about inside the arena, which isn't ideal. You, know, you generally want that arena to block the projectiles and stop the egg being taken down. But at the same time, I'm not sure it would have made a difference. I mean, the Morphling still had a free time to just be able to go in and take it down. So, I don't know. I mean, I would have liked to see it on the other side of the arena, I guess. But I, I still think it dies either way. This Morphling just had his, his crosshair set on this supernova. And if that happens, it's just not getting off. Then to Roshan, we shall go. Yeah, for sure. And this is uh, this is exactly what uh, Nova wants. Get this Aegis and pretty much walk into the high ground. They've taken every tier two tower as well already. It's 21 minutes in. This team is playing as if like enemy is just bot, you know. He's going one objective after the other, and it just feels like none of the cores on Nova can even die. They're so elusive, right? They yeah. have all ways to escape from the fights, and they all have ways to get out of the arena as well. Yeah, they absolutely do. It's 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 really really hard for uh, for them to to play the game they want to play right now. Cyber Legacy. I feel like uh, it's just kind of a waiting game. Is is there any situation, any team fight? that uh, Nova can take, uh, sorry, that okay. Cyber Legacy can take to get themselves back in? For sure, like, they need to get Mars to get Spear Arena combo on one of the cores to start off. And it, and it can be Morphling. This Morphling has Aegis, or the Morphling ju will just have too much HP, you can't kill him. So it's got to be either the Ember or the Queen of Pain. Now, if they can kill someone like that off, and all of a sudden the Troll Warlord and the Lone Druid end up, end up on the backline of Nova, can kill like Oracle or Dark Willow, then all of a sudden two heroes are just going to be dead like that at the start of the fight, which is definitely possible. So I think that's exactly what they need to plan in this next fight, and they're going to have to defend this high ground no matter what. They can't just split push, even if Lone Druid can take towers extremely fast. It's not going to be fast enough compared to this Morphic. No, this morphling is. Uh... Oh, here comes the smoke. Here it is. Here's the play. Alrighty, boys. Cyber Legacy. Let's go. Going for the wraparound. The series now in their hands. Can they do it? The question on everybody's minds. Mothers, children, wait with bated breath. They found Pion on the back lines. The ping's coming out. They know they're here. The smoke has popped. They're going to jump in. They're looking towards the Ember Spirit, but he jumps himself away. Oh dear, it's a pretty disastrous engagement here. They haven't found their points of engagement. And look at this supernova. I mean, it's just an egg ready to be cracked, and they're going to do exactly that. And now with scrambled egg in their bellies, they're coming forward some more. Big Nim is already taken out of the equipment. What the fuck is happening to Troll? What the? <laughs> God. But, oh, they lost, dudes. They lost. It's over. Look at look at that. They even had time to uh, put a copy paste in the old chat. Uh, still fighting into the Ember Spirit. Lord of getting a little bit low here, and they have actually lost yet. Yeah, my bad. My bad. They they catch out uh, space there with with a pretty nice little root coming out from the Lone Druid. Might not be yeah, over man, yet, Rax, guys. Rax is still up. Rax they're still up. There's still, still a hope. My bad. I take it all back. Cyber Legacy still in the game. Let's go. We're not done yet, kids, but they still have this, they still have the stages, you know, Morphling, he got a little bit impatient there, his career died before, uh, just got caught out when yeah. they did that little wrap around they got it with the God's Rebuke, but, uh, yeah, Morphling's still holding on to the double ultimate orb, he didn't want to wait for his scat, he probably should have waited for his scat, he never pays the price, but, yeah, I mean, they, they get the chance to reset, the fact that the troll died there, I think, is pretty key, though, I mean, the fact that Plantamus just keeps on dying, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's kind of rough. Yeah, this troll just had to have, like, amazing farm in this game and i think nova reading that so well and just keep chasing him around the map non-stop has been pretty much the key to their success mm -hmm. I feel like... they had to pull on to undo the whole jumper right and now for and... legacy they find themselves you know maybe a pair of underwear in that last fight but they're still a long way off from a full set of clothes meanwhile nova they're, they're rocking up with gold chains they're 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 step out their limo Decked top to bottom in Gucci or whatever's popular now, uh, a different unnamed designer brand. Dyer, are oh oh no, not Palantimos, please, not Palantimos. They're trying to help him out. Happy Dora throwing in some spells, trying to give him the space he needs to get out. But Troll Warlord, he is being controlled up there, and they are just going to quickly kill off Happy Dora. And they're looking forward towards this troll. And Troll, he doesn't really have an exit strategy. He's not even going to pop the ultimate. Just get that cooldown going on your death as quickly as possible. The sooner I die, the better it will be. But look at Shashlo here. He's, he's up in the top lane. You know, he's, he's, he's taking the tower. Yeah, they're, they're, they're pushing it out. Oh, they force up the glyph. This is exactly what they want. They want that glyph gone so they can just walk back in there. And now they know that uh, if these racks get low, they cannot be saved. No team fight is going to break out. 
And Palantimos is not going to buy back here, right? He's got 20 seconds left. It just doesn't feel good if you had to buy back here. Uh, I think I think Gambit, or sorry, Gambit. Uh, I just got Shackles, and Shackles is doing exactly what he should be doing. Just quick pushing and trying to bring people back. He's got to buy time for his team. He just got to buy time for his team to get uh, more farm, especially wait for Troll to get this BKB going. I think if he gets BKB, there's still some hope that he can kill Morphling, maybe? You know, burn all his mana. Yeah, twice in a row with up. Aegis. Mm -hmm. Oh, Aegis turned out. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. They gotta wait 30 seconds, and meanwhile, Lorenov is using this time as best he can, but they're gonna be able to get him up. He's stuck inside the Agi ship, but no, the false promise comes out. Meanwhile, Bignum tries to go for the big arena in the backlands. They've caught five heroes inside of it, but where is that egg? It's miles away. That egg's on another planet. Although it does look like Morphling is gonna lose his life, and now Shashlo rooting up the Ember Spirit. He's got the Ember Spirit again, Ember needs to get himself out, but he gets rooted up and beaten down. The Ember is dead for a second time around. Meanwhile, Plantamos yeeting into this fight right now, but they maybe have Lorenov. He needs to mold himself up. He's got the BKB, though. He's got the ability to give himself the strength and turn this one around. They've killed off the troll, they've killed off the Mars, and now Gambit, sorry, Cyber Legacy have to get themselves up onto the high ground. A plethora of different players playing for this team right now. They hold a little bit, but unfortunately, the Morphling, he's getting healed up. He's got to come straight back in on this one. Dude, where did this Black King Bar come from? All of a sudden, this world is a Black King Bar as well. He's so enormous. Sick Multicast, oh, he's gonna die here? Sick, sick, no, sick Multicast. He's healing up with that uh, Morbid Mask doing its job. Generally thought he had some kind of other lifesteal there. I was like, did he just put yeah, out a he, Satanic as well? Man, he almost died there, like, in the last fight. If that Black King Bar did not get dropped off by the Courier, like, I think uh, Cyber were definitely going to be back in this game after a play like that. Yeah, but we can oh, see like the racks haven't the fallen yet. Aegis is gone, Mwah. right? Right. I see. It. I see it. I I can see it. I can see the lines here for a comeback. That's for sure. What does Gaben think? Oh, Gaben believes. Gaben agrees. He he said sixteen percent, twenty two percent. Oh my goodness, they're they're coming back at this rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have a chance. Cyber Legacy, but the smoke Walking comes up. out. So they're gonna clip a big them with a blink away. Quick reactions. They can call him Big Finger Bignum for nothing, but unfortunately, they're now running out this high ground. Lorenov just sitting here, but he's going to get stunned up. Sunray's out on top of him, but in comes a fear. They've got Palantimos oh, locked down, dead to rights. No chance of finding this one. Ogre going to follow him to the grave just as promptly. Meanwhile, they'll finish off that bear. And now look forward towards Shashlo here. Shashlo trying to run himself away, run himself in. Going for that fear, going for the TP out. Did he get the road? No, he did not. The route comes out onto him, and he is dead as well. That is three heroes gone on the side of Cyber Legacy. The doors to the base wide open. Come on in, boys. Push those creeps in and get yourself some buildings yikes that okay that one was yikes, a big yeah. yikes yeah that was um, I mean, the, the fear onto the troll the is what we need to see where is this bkb the oh, troll yeah. he's just he's just so poor he's a peasant he's yeah. he's a little urchin on the street begging for a bkb please sir it's morphly man he's got more than twice the net worth of troll warlord i, I don't know wait i wait you're telling me that cyber legacy kicked this morphling player no, 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 they did not kick this Morphling player. I've never seen this Morphling player before. This oh, guy's okay, just, okay. just come out of nowhere, and he's made a lot of fans, well, a couple of fans today, maybe. Yo, this made me. I don't know, he's, man. He's made two this... at least, I think. He's actually insane. Like, his spellcasting has been great. His laning was incredible. His farming patterns was also awesome. And he just leads the way for his team. Like, he has no fear whatsoever. Like... He will just wave in and tank for his team if he needs to. And I've seen him do it multiple times in this game already. This, this guy is actually... He's something I'm, I'm else. I'm now completely ready for him to throw the game in the most spectacular fashion. And <laughs> put, put, into, put into action the caster's curse. Like, you've, you've just doomed this guy to make the most ridiculous play we've I'm ever sorry, seen. I'm sorry, but Lorenov is, so, is good <laughs> enough that he's not going to throw this game even with caster's curse on him. Alright, let's do it. Let's double down. Lorenov's amazing. He's, a, he's This guy is an actual god. I want to see if this will work. Can can yep. we all channel? I want all the chats to talk about good stuff about Lorenov here and see if we can get him to to curse him into oblivion and see if we can get him to throw, throw this game somehow. He's got such yeah. a big net worth oh. lead. There's no way they lose this one. There's no way this Morphling is going to throw this game. It's just not possible. He's got 20 seconds cooldown on good. his black game card. He's an oracle with a false promise. I think he's good. I think he's good. You <laughs> think he's good? Yeah. Underestimated he's good. the curse. He's good. Uh, see you. <laughs> I mean, I didn't break a sweat. Easy. Learn <laughs> off. Believe it. And he's about to finish a freaking satanic, man. This guy yeah. is... Oh my 
God. Satanic he's farming at like... the Titan Sliver. As Dude, well. he's been farming at a thousand gold a minute. Like Seriously? the last 10 Seriously? minutes. Like, oh, right, last 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay. I, was, I was checking that. I was like, that can't be true. I'm going to call him out here, but last 10 minutes. All right, fine. Yeah. yeah I mean, he still, is it's... a huge. Considering how much he's been fighting this game and how many team fights, you know, they've had 26 kills and the guy's still rocking a 714 GPM. Like, unless you've got a bounty hunter in your team, that's that's like a very alien gpm to be keeping up but, you know this is this is something you see on heroes which have like farming capabilities and just kind of spend the whole game hitting the jungle or in previous patches when kills gave a lot more but not this patch but hey you're still making yeah. it work low enough well what's the score like between last game and this game combined <laughs> i don't know like about 100 like to zero guy. sounds right jeez man satanic is complete now all he's got left is to replace that what rate Oh, I don't know what happened Phoenix. down here. The Phoenix just loses his life. They're trying to get the return kill onto Ember, but unfortunately, Bignum, he's all alone in space. He's trying to turn this one around. He's still fighting into Bignum here. I don't know if he's fighting or just playing. He's got a remnant up, and he does get that arena down. Uh, oh, happy. Ooh. Trying to get that uh, gank going. <laughs> he, got, he got interrupted by the creep. Oh, Tip the creep. He almost, I mean, if he could have... If he, if he could have, like, multicasted there, he could have definitely killed the Ember, but... Yeah, yeah, that would have been sick. There it is, the assault into the base. Yep. Another cliff being used, but this time the Raxes will not be able to stand. Laura, now I've definitely uh, feeling pretty confident. It doesn't seem like there's many ways in which he can go down. As, as we've discussed, as we've discussed here, okay, stun comes out, spear throwing him down to the low ground. That's one way to stop him, just get him out of the base, but. Well, Unfortunately, yeah, he's got a Titanic, a Titan Sliver, and an Oracle sitting behind he's him. He's going in. He's popping that BKB. He's going on to Bignum right now. Bignum doesn't have much of a chance here. He's just going to get his life lost. Meanwhile, Balancemo's trying to fight into this Morphling. He's losing this one. Beaven pops the ultimate to try and bring down this Morph, but Morph, he's absolutely fine. And Ed comes down to the back lines, but it's just going to boil quietly by itself, doing absolutely nothing. Space. He, uh, ooh, okay. Interesting from him, but uh, they do get their turn kill to plant most, so I guess not that bad. It did look a bit strange, but. Nonetheless, I'm just gonna go right back in there, right? He just wanted to uh, run away from the troll ultimate there and then reset. But uh, I think Ember a little bit too aggressive. A little bit, a little bit. I know he, you could tell what he wanted to do. He wanted to bait out that uh, that that troll warlord, but unfortunately, yeah, a little, a little bit carried away. But it doesn't really matter. Everyone on the side of Nova, they're just so strong. They're taking every melee barracks now. And Bingham's just got to call it. He's, he's respawned and he's done. He just call, throws down the, the G to the G. Game number two goes away at Nova. They tear apart this series. Lauren Elf tears apart this series. He doesn't just beat us. He doesn't just beat Cyber Legacy, but he beats a caster's